Hello there and welcome to another week in my garden. Uh, autumn now, very cold this morning. So what first thing job I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bit of a mulch on the rhubarb so just let it wash down for the winter and then we'll have a walk up the garden and show you a little bit of an update what's been going on and what's left and what we still got to do we'll put this mulch on the thing when you're mulching your rhubarb is not to put any in my case compost out the compost bin don't put it on top of the crowns themselves put it round the crowns you tend to put them on top it will rot the crown through the winter so put them round it and let it let it bed down that way okay so we'll get this on uh, as you can see there's the crown of this one so I just spread it around it's a little bit near that matting but the matting won't be there forever so so what we'll do look we'll just put it round look here look it's one of them things there bane of my life just put it round you don't need a lot And that will be plenty for that rhubarb, it doesn't need a great amount. And we'll just do this crown as well. Same again, you can see the crown is spreading to there, look. So we'll just put a bit round the edge. It is good garden compost, this is. There's, some people like to put manure around them. I think the days are chasing the the horse down the street to get the get the manure for the rhubarb's gone now. But I'll just empty the barrow there and then. We'll... And because I make my own compost. We have to use it a little bit sparingly as we, we won't have enough to go around. So that'll do for there nicely. The birds will throw it about a bit, so we might have to come back and just with the fork rake it back into place. But that'll be fine now. The rain will wash it down, the worms will come and fetch some, and come spring that'll be all nicely washed in and done. If I do have enough, I'll do the fruit trees as well. But that's that done. Well, if you look up the garden for a start start from the bottom and work our way up now first off there the leek plants I had left when I planted the main lines up there I just put in a clump just there they're not doing too bad they'll be they'll be okay they've got a bit of rust on them but that's because the air in this area there's a lot of horseradish grown wild and that's actually full of rust so these have picked it up it's such a high concentration it's difficult to to keep on top of it this is the carrot where we put the carrots you can remember very very late but we got them in so we'll be digging a few of these in a moment because we need some up at the house so we'll take them from the far end and then we'll work our way down to this end so we'll do that next <laughs> Right, the carrots coming up, we've got one or two little holes in them, that's not too bad. Even though it was in this net, I think we're better off in a raised bed and we put a wall round it of this fleece to stop the carrot fly coming over. Not bad, let's lift a few and see what we've got. Remember this is Clayland carrots. There you go, there they come. Some are good, some are very very good, not much markings on them. There you go, look, there's my carrot. Usable, I'll take quite a few out and then we've got a stock on in the house. But they haven't been thinned or anything, I just left them. Because they were so late, I didn't think we'd even get this to tell you the truth. And there's hardly anything, any marks on them at all. I'm 
well pleased with that. The thing to do is if send them all up to the house and then sort them out when we're up there. Yeah, I'm quite surprised how nice and clean they are. I lift quite a few because my son-in-law is going to pop in later so he can take some back. The really bad ones we'll send with him, not for those to use but they can give them to the horse so they, they won't be wasted. We'll also send some of those lovely sweet apples for the horses. Some are a bit split, but they're fine. Looking at them, they're not not bad, for, but we desperately need that raised bed to grow some carrots. That's a good carrot. Remember, if you see. The creeping buttercup, make sure you get it up with all the root and don't compost it. We'll put that separate for disposal. There you are, not, not bad. Well, they're not brilliant, but they're negotiable. Right, we'll cover these up. Right, that's the carrots uh, sorted. In the spring, as soon as the carrots are clear of this bed, I'm going to dig it, double dig it, if I get the time and if I've got any compost left for them in mind. We'll sort something out for that. Double dig it for the first and second early potatoes. They haven't had no potatoes in there for a good oh, three years now. So down the middle of these trees we'll have first and second early potatoes. So that takes care of that bit of a bed there for next time. Now the parsnips, bless them. Parsnips just cannot get into this ground, it is solid. I think you've already seen one last week what state they're in. We will use them. They're funny shaped, the fingers all over them, but there is parsnips in there so we will use these now this is bed C this will be for your onions your leeks will come down your beans your peas all the hungry crops and that's why I'm double digging with plenty of manure in this this is the bed that gets first choice of all the compost and manure I can get now because it's the onion bed the garlic goes in with it as well. As you can see, the early garlic has already started to come up. This is province white, which will be the first one ready. But, uh, it came up quite quick. I was quite surprised to see it up so early, but it's doing fine. It'll be okay. It looks like everyone has taken we've got two full rows so quite pleased with that now we'll just show you how we're progressing with the double dig as you can see the first section is finished the second section i've got to here um you can see where i've moved the the topsoil off and this is the clay and it's all been dug to a full full spit if you can remember when we was doing it on the lowest spit that I turn over 
I can put compost or manure anything that is not quite so well rotted down because it's deep it soon rots down there you can see there's a good depth to it now there you go if I can pull it out so we've got two foot of depth and the bottom has got manure dug into it and the top spit has got manure dug into it so we should be able to produce some decent onions on this and beans and peas all the heavy feeders go on to bed sea still on bed sea which ends at this little white post here this is the overwintering onions they seem to be all coming up a few of the white ones a bit shy to come up so we'll see how we go with those the rest are coming up fine the land was very well prepared for them and if you see on the double dig it looks a bit high but over the winter that will settle down and it'll all be level by the end of winter it's one called snowball that's dragging its feet a little bit if they're not up soon the weather is also cooling as well this is bed B that starts at the white post up to the next white post these are the brussels they're, they're firm they're ready we'll just get one or two more frosts on them and these are the smaller ones there's some larger ones up the other end I shall start at the larger ones and work my way through them but they look very nice there are some nice big ones there there's still a bit of white fly on them but what I found was that after I'd sprayed, I thought I'd made a good job. And there was a little bit of wind blowing. And in the wind, there was all white fly coming in on the wind. They look well. They're fine. They certainly won't be short of Brussels this year. I know a lot of people would cut them off and take the whole stem but I like to pick the ones that's ready and let the rest get ready rather than, than pick the whole stem. So we'll have a look at the raised bed now. Right, the two raised beds are about finished now, a little bit more on this one just to top it up. I've used all the spent compost out of the hanging baskets and pots etc and I've mixed some soil with it and then I should keep digging it through the winter so it breaks down the lumps of this old clay we've got here and breaks it down and mixes it in they'll be fine then I am putting another one on the end a small one that I can use uh, as a clutch for raising seeds in so I'll put cover on that and do it but we will put covers on those as well, obviously. Remember the carrot flies. We need to get these covered. So we'll be making the frames probably in when it's wet and we can't get out. We'll make the frames in the shed and then put them on top. But if it's successful, we might add more raised beds to see how we go on. It's a case of we'll see. Now what we didn't tell you that all the beans are in the beans are in here when we were down at the fruit bottom where the fruit trees are that's all got the field beans in as well all around where the apple trees are and in between and everywhere and we are having a little bit of problem with the squirrel he keeps lifting them and putting them in little groups so we'll see what <laughs> comes up and what doesn't and this denotes the the end of bed C. So remember bed C for next season will be the main crop potatoes will go in there. So that will be double dug. This was the onion bed for last year so the leeks are still in from this year's crop when next year this will be the brassicas as you can see the spring and autumn brassicas are already in. It's all been dug the bottom was broke and lined very well for the brassicas but these when these come out this will have to be dug over again they look very well they haven't got the rust so much at this end as what they have at that end 
as I said, because of those horseradish that are absolutely laden with with rust. These are looking good. I'm quite pleased. I have put some slug pellets in there, but they don't seem to have done a lot of lot of good at the moment. We'll have to just wait for bad weather to come and push the slugs underground a bit more. In the other one, again, slugs have been eating the young plants. As you can see, the plants are doing very, very well. The kale is doing well. As you can see, the broccoli is going from strength to strength this year. We, we seem to be eating an awful lot of broccoli. The young cabbage plants are, are doing better up that end than what they are at this end. And there's some collies in there as well. And there's some more purple sprout in here for the spring. So this will be done and then we'll have these out and prepare it for the summer brassicas then. But very pleased with it. Doing rather well. And all we need now is some frost on them I think. Now the fruit cage, it was new to us this year so we took the net off obviously for winter and I've actually moved, if you can remember, these current bushes down here. Now we've got a bit more room, they was a bit tight at that end so we brought them to here. But we won't take them this year, it'll be next year before we take them. And then I shall put a raised bed in there and start the next strawberry plants off another hybrid variety and that will be in this this area here and then we'll grub those strawberries and then move on again strawberry plants uh, they're in the third year now this end looks better than that end that's because the chickens took to that end and ate most of the plants but not this end i don't know why but they're banned now for the rest of the winter the trouble with this weather is we're getting strawberries well, it's November now they'll never make anything I just hope it doesn't weaken the plant I can nearly pick a punnet of strawberries they'll all be green but uh, very very unusual I, I thought if I would get the time I would take all these off but I just haven't had the time so they ought to come off really I don't know if they're going to weaken the plant bearing that in mind what I shall do maybe tomorrow yeah tomorrow if I, if I can get them I'm going to throw loads and loads of those chicken pellets on so when it does rain at least they'll get a feed while there's still a bit of warmth in the ground and if this is weakened the plants at all the chicken manure pellets that we put on will give them back that bit of goodness that they've lost in there. Now the current bushes and the goose bushes have all done exceptionally well this year. There is uh, a tree shading them up there which I'm going to have to remove this year because it's throwing too much shade on these plants this year. The new thing we've got this year is this thornless blackberry that we're growing on this end of the, the fruit cage. I think when I've removed this tree it'll let more light into this area and I think this will really do a lot lot better than what it has been. But that's uh, a winter job. This I shall put a stake at each end and I'll put some wires across. I'll do it at the same time as we do those apple trees that we're going to put on the boundary and they'll need exactly the same stakes and wires so we'll do all that together. It's really established but with it growing now the peats that grow now these branches will be the branches that bear the fruit next year so I've put them on cane so they don't get damaged because if you damage them obviously you won't get your fruit next year you won't get a lot because they're into a lot but we'll get some right. now because I'm thinking of taking this tree out it's a Liridendrium tulipiferia tulip tree I'm definitely going to have to take it out because it's casting too much shade for where it is. It's very unusual leaves. So, as you can see, the leaf is so big and it casts such a lot of shade, and it's I'm finding it very difficult to. Right, we're up at the top of the garden where we've got this fuchsia. I don't remember. I didn't, couldn't remember the name but Graham reminds me that it's Deltacera which seems to ring a bell. I do like it. It's a nice colour. It is very late so I'm going to try and take some hardwood cuttings off it. Just a couple to show you how we do it. I've, I've selected this branch and I'm going for these two 
side shoots now we're going for the top we'll go for those two side shoots and all I'm going to do is just take them off with a bit of a heel look just for now no second tiers to take them off and we'll take those down we'll prepare them and get them done when we're down there all right it's Friday today uh, we're down the garden on the in the fruit net this is where we're going to put these cuttings but before I start I'd just like to welcome all those new subscribers I thank you very much for subscribing, I do appreciate it. The fuchsias we just took off the, the main bush up there. Right, so let's see we dress them down. Remember, keep your secateurs very sharp for this job. We don't want all this at the top, this will probably flop over and die anyway. So let's take that off. Just a case of carefully taking the leaves off. Just pinch them out. These no good leaving that. There's a pair of branches there, they must come off. I use the secateurs, it's easier for me. Anyway, we'll reduce that. Now these leaves will drop off anyway. Now we we'll just tidy the heel up lot like that. Leave that bit of a heel and just take the tail off. And that's one ready. Remember these will drop off anyway. So we'll pop it in. We're a bit short of space, but we'll pop them in there. There's one. I'll do the other one, just to show you how quick they are to do. So we just take the soft top off. Let's go there, shall we? Take the soft top off. We'll trim that. You can see the heel there, look. Can you see that? We'll take that off. There you go. And I'll do these with secateurs, because it's easier for me. Just do, say two thirds up, half, two thirds. And you see there's two little branches there, we don't want those on, so we take those off. There's a nice little cutting, just tidy that up. Remember, it's a hardwood cutting. This is the hardwood at the bottom, as you can see, the harder, this is the softer top. That will slowly harden through the winter and this will root out. So let's pop it in with the other one and then we'll show what else we're doing. And pop them in there. They can be quite close together because they're in for a year. Right, this is the buddleia. We have actually filmed it in flower. Very long panicles of flower on We liked it so we're going to do some more. This one you can see there's the remnants of the flower at the top so we we'll take that off. And then... I took them with a little heel look, so we'll just tidy that heel up. And same again. It's got a nice piece of wood at the bottom, so it'll make a good cut in this one. If I can get them off, there you go. And we'll take these other two off, they'll, they'll fall off anyway. There you go. So, Budley, pink. I've already done one, so I'll add that one to it. There, push them well into the ground and we'll firm them in in a moment. And the next one I'm going to do is the Orcuba, the spotted laurel. Same again, these are big leaves, so they'll break quite easy. Look, if you just bend them down, you see. These root quite easily, we'll be all right with these. Leave, just leave two or three on the top like that and just take that off there again I just need to square the bottom can you see where I've took it off but we'll square that there you go look so it's nice no rooting powder I'm not scoring the sides because I don't need to and that pushed it must push them well in now that goes in with the other one in there when you're pushing them, try not to bend them. If you bend them, you bruise the lining of the cutting and they won't take, they'll just go wrong. This is Prunus lusitanica. This is the variegated form. As you can see, that little bit of variegation on the leaf. It's exactly the same as the green form we'll do in a moment, but this is a little bit prettier. So again, take the leaves off. We're going to lose this top because it's a bit... It's a bit sappy that top, we'll lose it anyway, so we must take it off. And again, look, I'm just going to square the bottom, that's it. 
And you can see there's a little bit of wood there that will root out of that beautiful. And we'll pop that in with the other one. This is there. Not too hard remember, you can see the variegated form quite easily. This is Photinia red robin. It will turn red in the spring. The new leaves are red and it looks quite pretty. Again, roots quite easy. I do hope some of you have a go at doing this. It's, it doesn't take up a lot of room in your garden. And, uh, well, I, I'll count up in a minute just how many cuttings we've taken in there. Same again, not big leaves so they come off easy. Now, again, I'm going to square the bottom just below a node. That's it. And that goes in with the other one which is right at the end. Not. And push, but don't over push them. Just make sure they're firm. That's the Prunus lusitanica, the green form. Its common name is Portuguese laurel and that's a variegated one. And so we've got quite a few in there. So we've got a dozen. What we're going to do, I used the handle of the spade this time and I'm just going to tighten those bottoms up. They're all in Remember, sand and grit mixed together, put in the bottom of the trench, same as before. And the labels are in there as well, look. So that's some nice and firm. Just clean the hand. And then we're just going to... I should do that again, just to tighten them. It's getting them tight that actually helps with the rooting. Especially when the wind's been blowing and the frost is loosening them a little. Then we'll just take this over. There you go. Take it over, level it up. And then just tighten it through. Now if we go back to the originals, these are all the, the fruit, so what I would do is after a few few weeks, I just come along, or when I'm passing, if they look like they want tightening, I just go along and tighten them up a bit. You can see these are plenty tight, so they're alright. Take that lump away. Apart from keeping them tight as we said through the winter while they're being messed about with the weather keep them well weeded don't let the weeds go in amongst them in the real hot summer give them a drink of water a can of water won't hurt them and they're taking up a very small space in the garden in a little space like that which is about one and a half meters square we've got 50 cuttings in even if we only get 50 percent of that they're still good for a small piece of ground. Do try. Uh, you don't have to do it in the vegetable pot. You could do it as long as you don't put it under a hedge or anything where it's going to dry out too much. You can put it anywhere, even in your flower beds. It's worth having a go. Something you've actually rooted and produced yourself always seems to do a bit better, I always think. Friday. Sun's coming out, as you can see. It's burning my face. It's wonderful. We've had a few frosts this week. I've still got loads of autumn work to do, a lot of digging. When we get a little bit more into winter, we'll do the fruit tree pruning. We'll also do the shrub pruning. We'll be down doing the winter wash on the apple fruit trees, apples and fruit trees. Uh, we'll probably have loads and loads still to do. It's actually just starting to rain. Now <laughs> the sun's out, it's raining. So never mind the brussels etc to to harvest so we'll show you what we get on those won't show you the parsnips so. though um the carrots are doing rather well i'm quite pleased with my clayland carrots this year but so that's about it for this week have a nice weekend if you're out in the garden wrap up or bring your brolly like i think i need at the moment thank you very much for subscribing and we'll see you again next week bye now